Good morning and welcome to Victory Church of Red Deer. I'm Pastor Joyce and I'm here on behalf of, of the other leaders here just wanting to welcome you to this service. We're so glad you've joined us. With the, if you're watching online, it's good to have you. If you're here in the house, it's good to gather together in God's house to serve Him. It's a good day to worship God. It's always a good day to worship God, but especially here on Sundays. And we're going to continue our sermon series this morning. Pastor Chuck has been talking about the quest for peace. And one of the things he mentioned last week that I thought was so good is that the quest for peace is really a quest for Jesus himself. And you know, at Christmas time, and especially with everything that's been going on, we really do need Jesus. And so I uh, welcome you to join with us. You're going to enjoy the service. Let's just open with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much that we can trust in you today. Thank you that you are with us, that this is your plan and your idea for us to get together on this day. And we just want to celebrate you and give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a couple of announcements for you. First of all, next Sunday, next Sunday morning, we've got a, the family Christmas service here. The Victory Kids are going to be involved. It's going to look a little different than before because a lot of it is, is pre-recorded, but it's going to be worth coming out. So next Sunday, family Christmas service here. And then on Christmas Eve at 4.30, you're welcome to join us. We're going to have Christmas Eve here in Oriole Park at 4.30, some carols and a great message, and just a time of getting together to celebrate our Savior. So enjoy the service. We're glad you've joined us. The praise and worship team is ready to go. Please stand and join us.
we just lift up the name of Jesus high in this place. God, during the season of Advent, just prepare our hearts that you came to earth as a baby to save us. Thank you, Father, for all the promises that are found in Christmas, all the hope that is found in Christmas, all the peace that is found in Christmas. Just fill our hearts, fill our homes, fill our families with the peace that is only found in Jesus.
church this morning and I was uh, thinking about things that are happening in the world today, things that are happening locally, in our own lives, at our works and it's almost like you're walking around and you can feel this spider web of stuff wherever you go and it was, uh, I put a name to it this morning and I think it's fear. I was listening to the radio and a song came on and singing about that first Christmas 2,020 years ago. And the angels appeared to the shepherds and they, they said, they cried to them, do not be afraid. That wasn't just 2,020 years ago. That is today. Do not be afraid. For look what God has done. He has brought us His Son not just as a gift 2,020 years ago, but as a gift today. It's a gift that all of us can open over and over every day. He has come. Do not be afraid. Thank you. Let's just sing that song one more time. And put your hand on your heart and sing it to yourself this morning.
Father, we thank you that you're burning like a fire through every stronghold. Father, I thank you that depression is lifting in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that hope is returning to people in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that new life is, give, is coming to people this morning. And we just thank you. I praise you that healing is coming to people. I thank you, Father, that discouragement is fleeing in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Father, for your holy name, for your holy name that brings freedom to people. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. And then they tried to sit down. How many of you had enough? <laughs> Definitely not worship. How many of you have had enough in life? Like sometimes we just have to come to the place where enough is enough. You know, either what Jesus said is true or it isn't. How many of you have had enough of looking at what you don't have? And how, how many of you are willing to start looking at what you do have? You know, I was talking to somebody in the mall and they were saying, dealing with the mask issue, they were, the, another pastor was saying that, you know, if you were in China and they told you as a Christian that you could go to church in China if you'd wear a mask, every Chinese person who is a Christian would be rushing to church. Sometimes it's so easy for us to get focused on what we don't have that we miss what God is doing. And I think it's time to say enough is enough. Enough is enough. Christmas is a time where Jesus came to set people free and to deliver people and to, and to spare them from harm. And that's the Jesus that we serve this morning. So I'm going to change the title from um, whatever it is, The Quest for Peace, to Enough is Enough this morning. Actually, I'm not. But we can pretend, okay? You know, Christmas is all about peace. Christmas is all about Jesus giving us peace. Jesus came so people could have peace. He came last week we talked about how there can be peace between us and God. How there can be between, um, how there can be peace between people. And how we ourselves can live at peace. How our hearts can have peace. And that includes this season. We need to remember that at Christmas time, Part of the message is that Jesus came to bring us peace. Jesus came to bring you peace. Enough with the worrying. You know, the message that the angels brought to the shepherd was peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. If you're a Christian this morning and you've given your life to Jesus Christ and you're following Him, the message is for you to have a, a message of peace. In Isaiah 9 and 6, prophesied long before Jesus came, it says, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and say it with me, Prince of Peace. That's who Jesus is. God wants you to have peace today. In all honesty, how many of you don't feel much peace? Or you came to the building without feeling much peace in, peace in all honesty? How many of you are like that? Four honest people here. Well, I'm preaching to you guys that raised your hands. But I think we all go through, in reality, we all go through periods where it doesn't seem like we're experiencing peace, but God wants us to have peace. Jesus came into this world so that we can experience peace, so our hearts can be at peace. God wants us to experience peace, but do you know sometimes what God wants to give you? What God wants to make available to you, you don't receive? 
Just because God wants to give you something and God has made a way for you to receive something doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to receive it. Quite a number of years ago when I began in ministry, I want to just tell you a, hopefully a brief story so you can see where I'm coming from. Quite a number of years ago when I started in ministry, it was my job to um, look after new guys who came to the men's conference. The men's conference in Lake Louise was a huge deal at that time. Lots of people came. It was a time to experience God. And so what the church would do, would pay, it would pay for two or three people that probably couldn't afford to, to go themselves. And so the church would pay for them to go and to be part of this men's conference. And my job was to take one or two of the new guys and room with them and kind of look after them for the sake of the conference. Sometimes this was a little bit challenging one year in particular, um, we had the Friday night service and everything was going really well. And then I headed to the room and I thought the guy was going to be there shortly behind me and he wasn't. And so I went to bed anyways and it's really hard for me to sleep in a situation like that. But finally I fell asleep. He still wasn't showing up. And then at 2.30 in the morning, he came into my room, into our room, turned all the lights on, started talking, lit up a cigarette. And I didn't even pretend to be nice. <laughs> Words came out of my mouth that probably weren't the most loving and weren't the most understanding. But that's the way I responded to that. And then... Um, he quietened down, turned the lights off, and we um, fell asleep. And then the next morning, he kind of went his separate way, and I went mine. And then Saturday night, when it came time for us to go back to our room, he was nowhere to be found. And so I laid there thinking about how um, I'd said some dumb things and, and was thinking about how my attitude was wrong and kind of beating myself up. And then the Lord um, dropped something into my heart at that time and it just simply was everything is going to be okay. And me being the great spiritual giant that I am, lay down and slept for the rest of the night. How many of you believe that? In all honesty, it didn't make any difference at all. I laid there for the rest of the night, um, slipping, fi sleeping fitfully if I slept at all. And just the condemnation and all of those things were running through my mind. When finally it um, came to be morning, I got up and went downstairs and I met him. Um, for breakfast, and he was bouncing off the walls. He was so happy. He told me that he'd saved somebody, not exactly correct theology, but I knew what he meant, that he had saved somebody and he'd stayed up late at night visiting with them. And then when that person had finally gone to bed, he'd gone out on the lake and was walking on the ice, even though there were signs up all over the place that said thin ice. And uh, he did survive, but please don't do that. You know, make sure you're doing what's sensible. But I often thought about that. God had tried to give me peace. God had told me that I could be at peace, that everything was going to be okay, but I didn't accept it. And so I spent the rest of that night worrying and being in a dither. I wonder how often God speaks to us like that. And we don't pay attention. What I want to talk to you about this morning is the still, small voice that God gives, that God speaks to us with. A still, small voice. Something will come into your heart. A phrase, a verse, or something will come into your heart that will deal with the situation. And I want to show you this morning how to pay attention to that still, small voice. How to listen to that still, small voice and accept the peace that comes from listening to that voice. You know, not too long ago, a week or so ago, 
I woke up in the middle of the night and I wasn't tired and I was at peace and I got up and so I went downstairs and I started to pray. I prayed for you guys. I prayed for the situation that's going on. I prayed for um, the church and what was going on. And as I was praying and looking at the problems and dealing with the issue, I started to get worked up inside. And then a verse came to my mind. It was from my passage in Isaiah 51, a passage that I believe the Lord has has given to me a long time ago. One of the verses from that passage just came alive to me for a second. And it simply is Isaiah 51 verse 14. The cowering prisoners will soon be set free. They will not die in their dungeon, nor will they lack bread. Did you get that? God was speaking that to me for you. Did I pay attention to that? No. I went to bed, and I'm thinking, oh, isn't this great? I was at peace, now my mind's going, and I'm all stirred up again. And then I remembered the verse that came to me. They will not die in their dungeons, nor will they lack bread. Then I I started to focus on that verse, and I realized what God had been telling me while I was praying for you, that things were going to be okay. I don't know what kind of a dungeon you're in this morning. If you are in a dungeon, a dungeon of fear, a dungeon of lack, a dungeon of whatever it may be, a dungeon of discouragement, a dungeon of not being healthy, whatever it may be, I want you to know the Word of God for you this morning is you will not die in your dungeon, nor will you lack bread. You can get excited about that. I believe that's a promise that God has given to us this morning. I could have missed that if I had not gone to bed and that verse came to my mind again. I want you to start to pay attention to that still, small voice that God speaks to us with. Sometimes we want things to be big and we want somebody, and I appreciated your word this morning, Jared. Thank you for being willing to share that. Sometimes we want big things or we want somebody to say, thus saith the Lord, or we want the heaven to part, or we want a whole bunch of different things like that to happen when what God is doing is ministering to us with His still, small voice saying to us, you know what, it's going to be okay Jesus came to bring us peace, so don't just be looking for the big, over-the-top, amazing thing, but understand that verse that came to your mind that dealt with that situation. Not necessarily you're searching your Bible, looking for verses, but the verse that kind of came to you and stuck out to you. Pay attention to that. That can be God speaking to you and trying to encourage you and trying to help you to go in the way that you should go. God wants to give us peace, but our hearts need to be open to experience the peace that God gives us. I have three simple steps that I want to look at this morning, how how we can experience peace. Before I get into that, I have something special for you. How many of you realized in the last little while we've seen miracles happen? There has been amazing things happen in the last little while. Well, one of those happened to Pauline recently. And so, Pauline, why don't you come and share with us what happened? So uh, in uh, the end of September, I ended up being really sick and uh, wasn't really sure what was going on, but um, I was having problems breathing, and uh, it was in my right side, on my right lung, and I thought that possibly I had pulmonary embolism, which I've had before. And so I ended up at the hospital, and they put me in to get a CAT scan right away, 
uh, because it's something I'm susceptible to. And uh, every breath that I took was excruciating. I had a high temperature. They tested me for COVID. I don't have COVID. Never, I didn't have COVID. Um, but this was something totally different. And when they did the CAT scan, they saw that um, I had um, uh, pleurisy around my right lung, and that's what was causing the pain, but also that my heart was enlarged. And um, so they were very concerned about that because one can cause the other and the other can cause the other. So they go back and forth. They wanted to dig deeper, find out what was wrong, but they ruled out the pulmonary embolism, sent me home, and uh, um, the doctor gave me medicine and, and stuff like that. But anyway, they sent me home and booked me in for an echocardiogram on my heart to see if the heart was actually causing the lung issue. And uh, that was the first step. And so when I went in for that, the girl that was doing it, she did extensive uh, looking and digging and measurements and blah, blah, blah. And she goes, your heart is actually really, really good. She said, I am surprised. And I'm like, well, I'm not really that surprised. People were praying for me. I'm not that surprised. And I know Pastor Chuck said to me, uh, you know, just stay and rest at home. But uh, you're going to be all right. That's, that is what you said. And so that is what you said. And anyway, and, and I felt that way. I had such a peace about it. And then they booked me in for an echo cart or um, uh, to see the respitologist. And that was this past week. And so on Tuesday, I was going in for a consultation and he called me. He had sent me for all these tests the week prior. And uh, he calls me up and he said, Pauline, everything there's nothing wrong with you. And, and he said, do you have these symptoms anymore? And I said, no, I haven't had those symptoms for a long time now. And uh, he said, there's absolutely nothing wrong. And he said, you're perfectly healthy. I see all your blood work, all your tests. You're perfectly healthy. And so I just want to give God the praise for that. You see, we need to start believing that we're not going to die in our dungeons, nor will we lack bread. And Pauline could have let that steal her peace. And I remember telling her, you could tell that she wasn't doing very well at the church, go home. But she refused. How many of you know Pauline doesn't listen to me very often? <laughs> that's, not, that's not true, by the way. But I appreciated her attitude, and, and you know, I, I just didn't believe that that was going to take Pauline out of the game. We need her here, right? And so that wasn't going to take her out of the game. And God is a God who tells us that we're not going to die in our dungeons, nor are we going to lack bread, that everything is going to be okay. But we need to pay attention to the voice of God when it comes to times like that, so that we can experience what God Himself wants to give to us. I have a couple quick things that I want to mention to you this morning that will help, hopefully help you, to experience the peace that Jesus already wants to give to you. But I want to warn you, I'm not giving you a formula. This is not three easy steps for you to go home and do, but this is three things for you to take into your heart and make it part of who you are so that you can experience the peace, so that you can experience whatever God wants to give to you. The, my first point is, remember that it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's not so much about the three steps or whatever, but it's about Jesus. And we go to Jesus. We don't go to a formula, but we go to Jesus to experience His peace and His life that He wants to give to us. My second point this morning is learn and lean on the promises that God has for you. The Bible is full of promises. One I love to quote to myself is in Romans chapter 8 where he says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. 
How many of you know in life sometimes you can't always feel God's presence and it's not always a goosebumpy thing? And it's at times like that where you wonder what's going on, where you have to go to verses like that and you need to tell yourself, no, I'm not. Jesus hasn't neglected me. He's promised that He will never leave me. He promised that He would never forsake me and I know that He's here with me. And I want to share a couple verses that David knew, um, well, he wrote them, so of course he should knew them. In Psalms 27, David said, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Another verse, Psalms 118, we're not 100% sure that it's David that wrote it, but it probably is. It says, I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. He was looking forward to knowing that he was going to be able to proclaim what the Lord had done to get him out of the situation that he was in. Quote verses like that to yourself. I like to kind of um, put the two together. I like to say, I will not die but live and I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Say that to yourself. Say that to yourself loudly sometimes. Say that to yourself until you start to believe that. Take verses like that and speak to yourself. I don't recommend that you start hollering when you're out in a mall or something, these verses. But when you're by yourself, I have to tell you this little story. A while ago, I would say, years ago, I would say, Jesus, if my thought pattern would start to go negative, if I'd start to to dwell on things that I shouldn't, I'd say, Jesus. And what it would do is refocus my mind and refocus my brain. Well, we had a girl that was living with us at the time, and she, um, I'm not even sure what, words I can use now that are politically correct, but she was struggling in life, let's put it that way. And um, we were riding and we were taking her to a school that she was going to go attend to, and I'm driving down the streets in Olds, and I say, Jesus, and she says, where? (laughs) (laughs) But say things. Speak the promises of God and speak them loudly to yourself if you need to. But my third point, and this is the one that we all need to understand, my third point is pay attention to the still small voice that tells you everything will be okay. The whole world may seem like everything's coming apart at the seams, but many times there will be a still, small, quiet inner voice that is speaking peace to you. Pay attention to that quiet inner voice. I don't know if you remember, but Joyce shared a couple of weeks ago, how she was struggling in her first pregnancy and things weren't going very well and it could have been a disaster. And the Lord spoke to her at that time and it was just in her spirit a voice spoke and said, it's going to be okay. And Joyce took that and accepted that and Val is here today and she's even relatively normal. Val is a wonderful person and I'm very proud that she's my oldest daughter. You see, there there are times like that where God speaks to us. There's times like that where God speaks to us and we want the big, over-the-top, amazing thing. But pay attention to the still, small voice. Remember the story of Elijah in Scripture? Elijah had confronted the prophets of Baal, took on 400 of them, 
They had tried to call down fire. The prophets of Baal had tried to call down fire on an altar and light it up. There was a bull on the altar. And to make a long story a little bit short, they cried all morning, nothing happened. Elijah then starts to make fun of them. He says things like, you know, maybe he's asleep, you need to wake him up, holler louder. Maybe he's on a journey, maybe he's going to the bathroom and you need to holler. That's what Scripture says, I'm not making that stuff up. And after the 400 prophets of Baal have tried everything, and there's no fire from heaven that comes to burn up the offering, then Elijah builds an altar. And he puts wood on the altar, and he puts a bowl and cuts it up and puts it on the altar. And then he has the people pour water, jug after jug of water on the altar, until the water is just over everywhere and he's even dug a trench and the trench is full of water around the altar. And then Elijah prays just a simple little short prayer. Let me read it to you. Elijah just says, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you were God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all of these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so that these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. The children of Israel at that time were turning away from God and turning to worshiping an idol. The idol's name was Baal. Elijah prayed that simple prayer. Fire came from heaven, burned up the wood, burned up the bull, burned up the altar, and licked up the water. Everything was gone. The people respond. The people respond with, the Lord, He is God. Elijah has the prophets of Baal killed. Elijah prays and a seven-year drought ends. And then the queen says, Elijah, I'm going to kill you, and Elijah runs away. Big things, right? Big things. Elijah was in the middle of a whole bunch of, of big things, and Elijah runs away. And an angel comes and feeds Elijah and tells him to go to Mount Horab. It's a place where God had met people in the past. It's actually the place where God gave the Ten Commandments to the children of Israel. So Elijah goes to Mount Horab. And he goes into a cave there. And God shows up. In 1 Kings 19... The situation, the scene is described. Elijah, or God, shows up, like I said, in verse 11, then a great and powerful wind tore the mountain apart. God shows up and there's this big wind. The mountains torn apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah replied, I've been, very zealous. I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. And I'm the only one left, and now I'm trying to kill myself too. And now they are trying to kill me too, sorry. Sometimes you shouldn't think faster than you're talking. Sometimes it feels like that, right? Sometimes we might have won a big emotional battle. You know what I've found in life after a big battle? That's when you need to look out because sometimes it's after the battle is over that a person really struggles. But here God comes 
to Elijah and meets Elijah, he doesn't say, Elijah, what in the world are you running away for? Can't you for once get it together? And I think it's interesting that God allowed a big wind and a fire and an earthquake. But you know where the answer was for Elijah? It wasn't in all of that, but it was in the still small voice. The moral of the story is pay attention to the still small voice that God is speaking to your heart. God is a God of peace, and He wants to bring you peace. If you follow the story through, God tells Elijah, He says, You're not the only one left. There are 7,000 other people who've never bowed to Baal. And He gives Elijah some instructions on what He's supposed to do. And God came through for Elijah. You see, the message. This Christmas season is God is a God who provides peace for us. And yes, God can do amazing, over-the-top, big, wonderful things. But if that's all you're waiting for, if that's all you want and that's all you're waiting for, you will miss a lot of what God wants to do. I've had God speak to me in a still, small voice way more often than I've had something big, amazing, and over-the-top, earth-shaking happen in my life. How many of you would agree with me? You see, don't miss the still, small voice of God. Because in that, you will find the answer to what you're looking for. Look at what Isaiah 55 says. And I believe this is for us here this morning as well. Isaiah 55, listen. Are you thirsty for more? Come to the refreshing waters and drink. Even if you have no money, come, buy and eat. Yes, come and buy all the wine and milk you desire. It won't cost a thing. Why spend your hard-earned money on something that can't nourish you or work so hard for something that can't satisfy. So listen carefully to me, and you'll enjoy a scrumptious feast, delighting in the finest of food. Pay attention and come to me, and hear that your total being may flourish. That's what Jesus is offering to us. That's why he came this Christmas season, so that we can experience peace. You know, Jesus talked about Him being living water. Talked about it would be, when we come to Him, it would be an artesian well that came up inside of us. You see, that's the God I serve. And that's what He does. And yes, there's big things that happen. But I found in life it's much more about taking one small step at a time. It's about following Jesus today and doing what's right today. And it's about following Jesus tomorrow and doing what's right tomorrow. Because that's where you will experience the bigger things, the breakthroughs. Isn't God awesome? Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, I thank you so much that you're here with us this morning. I thank you, Father, that you care about people. Father, that you want to impart life to people. And I just ask, Lord, that you administer your grace to each one who came. While eyes are bowed, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, How many of you would say, Chuck, I've been missing the still small voice of God in the last little while, and I've allowed things other than God's peace to consume me? If that's you, show me by raising your hand. Yeah, I see those hands. Father, I pray for these people that raised their hands. Lord, I just ask that you administer life to them that you would remind them 
of the things that you've said to them in the past. Father, that they would trust in you and that they would look to you as being their source and being their life. Father, may we all pay attention to the still, small voice that you speak to us with. Is there anyone here this morning and you've never heard God's voice speak to you and you're not sure what I'm talking about? Would you show me by raising your hand? Nobody, that's good. If you're online and that's the case, get a hold of us and we can help you with this as well. I never want to close a meeting without giving people an opportunity to come and to give their life to Jesus. Jesus is the only way. His life is the best, and His life is a life of freedom. If you give yourself to Him, it's not a hard thing to do. Just pray a simple prayer, something like, Jesus, I give myself to You. I want to be a follower of Yours. Forgive me for my sin. And I want to be your son or your daughter. Say a simple prayer like that, and we trust that God will come into your heart and will change your life. Don't just say the prayer, though. Tell somebody. Tell somebody at the church here. Make this a permanent thing that, you're, that you've done. Put a stake in today. I can guarantee you that if you pray a prayer like that tomorrow morning, you'll wake up and you'll say, nothing happened, God didn't hear me. And that's the time when you need to say, yes, he did, and to move forward. Isn't God awesome? Let's praise and worship him this Christmas. Joyce. Yes, our God is worthy of praise, and he is a God of peace. Aren't you glad for that still, small voice? You know, sometimes we miss it, but you keep listening for it, you'll hear it more all the time. So thanks, Pastor Chuck, for that message. That was really good. Uh, we want to receive an offering this morning. And, uh, you know, we just want to, that's part of our worship to God. When we give to him of our tithes and offering, it's just an act of our worship too. So um, there's lots of ways you can give this morning. You can, uh, there's envelopes there in the chairs in front of you. We have the offering boxes here or the debit machine over at the Connections Center there. And of course, if you're online, there's, um, and at home, you can uh, give online. There's lots of options there. You can check that out on our website. So uh, we just want to thank God for his faithfulness to us. You know, it's been a, a challenging time, but God is faithful, and he is with us. He cares about us. He loves us. He speaks to us. So let's just pray and honor him, and then um, we'll close the service. Father, we thank you so much for your faithfulness to us, Lord. We thank you for that still, small voice that you speak to us. You lead us. You, you give us hope. You speak life into our beings, Father. It brings us peace. And so, Father, I just thank you that that will continue in each one of your people today. And Father, we just thank you um, for this offering. We thank you, Father, for the faithfulness of the people here, both both in church and online, their faithfulness to continue to give of their tithes and offerings, Lord, that you would be honored and glorified and that we would be able to continue the work that you've called us to do here in Red Deer. So we just give you glory and praise today. Thank you for being with us and going with each one of us, Lord. You are awesome and worthy of all the glory and honor and praise. And we just give that to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you're... Um, you have children downstairs, don't forget um, to get them. To, you know, they're still yours, and, um, and the teachers would love you forever for that, too. Also, if you uh, want some prayer, uh, there'll be people up here, myself included, that would be happy to pray for you. So if you'd like some prayer after the service, please just come forward. Um, and that's the end of our service this morning. Thank you for coming. We pray that God bless you and keep you this week and just enjoy peace in his presence. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.